Hey, what's up? Welcome or welcome back. If you're new, my name is Lena, AKA Frumpy Fit. I'm an online weight loss coach who's dedicated to calling out all the BS in the fitness industry and providing you with accurate fitness, nutrition, and weight loss information. Today, we are in fact calling out some BS. And I can briefly summarize that BS as no pain, no gain, but I have a lot more to say about it. It's so much more deep than that. It's been eating away at my brain for a very long time, like bothering me. And I think I've finally come to a place where I can verbalize it and really explain what is wrong with all of this and also what it even is. Because I came to the realization that there were certain pieces of content where I was having to block the largest number of people for being absolutely disgusting and rude because that's really only when I block people. Do you disagree with me? Fine, but like, don't be rude. And while each content piece was slightly different, it had the same underlying theme, which is you don't have to absolutely kill yourself or have the most restrictive diet or whatever to get results, which is odd to me that people would be so angry and upset about that message compared to other things that I share. But before we jump into all those details, this video is sponsored by Built Bar, my all-time favorite protein bar company. And these, the Built Puffs, are my all-time favorite protein bar. They are 100% real chocolate on the outside. Let's just actually put up the texture clip of me doing the pull apart because it's, you gotta see it. 100% real chocolate on the outside, flavored marshmallow on the inside. It is so light and fluffy and delicious. I cannot even explain to you how this is a protein bar and not a candy bar. My favorite and the one that I showed pulling apart is the coconut one. Think like Almond Joy, but marshmallow. And I'm an absolute marshmallow freak. We, I always have treats in the house, like including ice cream. Ice cream is definitely the top of the list. And the flavor that we bought last week was Rocky Road and I'm eating it much more quickly than the normal flavors that we get. And I think that's because it has marshmallows in it. And I just like, I just wanna keep eating it just to get to the marshmallows. I love marshmallows. So when Bilt was like, hey, we're gonna send you these Puffs bars. And then I tried them. I was like, I'm never eating any other protein bar ever again. So in this protein bar that's disguised as a candy bar, <laughs> there's 140 calories, 17 grams of protein, and only six grams of sugar. That is, phenomenal. I literally reach for these more as a treat than I do for a protein bar lately. So if you want to try them, I recommend getting the variety pack. It'll come also with the churro and the banana cream pie flavor. You can find them at the link in my description and you can use this discount code that will get you 15% off. Thanks Bilt for sponsoring this video. All right, so to start, I want to share the content pieces, like just a general outline of the content pieces that I've gotten the most hate on by far. And the very first time I noticed this was my reaction to Adrian Bailon. That was, I think, maybe my first reaction video ever. Sass was turned all the way up to max level because I tend to be very sassy, but I realized over time that it kind of dilutes my message a little bit, which is why I've toned down the sass. But people were like losing their mind in the comment section because I was like, Adrian was talking about eating like Ezekiel bread, which is very healthy, but very expensive. And that was kind of the vibe that I got from Adrian's video. It was like, everything was pretty expensive, like healthful foods. And that's cool, but that's not a message that I want to perpetuate, <laughs> perpetuate, that you have to eat these like expensive healthy foods in order to get results. Especially because I've gone through periods of time in my life where I could not afford those foods. Like I've gone through periods of time where I don't look at the price tag on foods. I just buy what I want. And then I've also been through phases where I make the decision of what I'm gonna get based off of the price almost alone. Like I look at the category of food and I'm like, okay, what's the cheapest thing? So I would just hate somebody to watch a video of somebody eating Ezekiel bread and like all this expensive stuff and be like, okay, now I guess weight loss is out of reach for me because I can't afford it. So that was kind of the first time I noticed it. Then in response to that, I think I made a TikTok about that same topic of like, you don't have to eat the expensive bread to lose weight. People absolutely lost their minds. I then made a meme eventually I think this is a while later. It's like what gives people feelings of power and the bottom one that you add in as the meme maker was how restrictive your diet is. And it was the biggest one. Like people for some reason think like they are the almighty greatest person on earth if they can follow a restrictive diet. And so I was talking about that, had to block somebody in the comment section because they were being a dick. And the most recent one, the one that really just sent me straight off the edge, I did a little rant about it in real time on Instagram that this video was now inspired by, I talked about 75 hard. So I made that YouTube video about it, but then I was also sharing some content on Instagram. And 
I have way fewer followers on Instagram. So like I see all the comments, whereas YouTube, I don't see all of them. And my Instagram, I also feel like is much more close knit. So it's like, I'm purposely getting into the comment section because I want to interact with people. And my 75 hard posts made it to the 75 hard side of Instagram. And the 75 hard people were not shy about how much they hated my content and how awful it was and how much better they were than me and everybody who <laughs> listens to my advice. So to summarize the 75 hard thing, if you've watched the video, you already know, my position is that if you're doing 75 hard to do it to lose weight, you should not be doing it. If you're doing it for the mental toughness aspect of it and weight loss is more of like a, a bonus, we'll see what happens, fine, cool, do that mental toughness thing. But it is not a challenge. Andy Frisella says this himself. It is not a fitness challenge. It's not just for people who want to lose weight. And so in my analysis of the perspective of doing it solely for weight loss, the issue is that it's so unsustainable because you're not doing it for the mental toughness. The whole point is not to continue that type of behavior forever. On the 76th day, you tend to be like, oh my God, it's finally over and kind of overcompensate for that. You're burnt out. And so maybe you no longer can continue. Maybe you couldn't even finish it in the first place because it was too unsustainable. It's too challenging, which then made you feel bad about yourself and like a failure. And literally people in the comment section are like, no, on the 76th day, you realize you never want to return to mediocrity. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like the, these people doing 75 hard think they're better than everybody else, genuinely. Not everybody, not everybody. I actually have had a long conversation in the DMs with somebody who is doing 75 hard and likes it, but hates the fact that everyone thinks they're better than everybody else. So I absolutely understand that there are some of you who are not like that, but the people that are like that, they found me and they came for me. And then another post that I made on Instagram was kind of a two-parter, which followed kind of the two parts of that YouTube video that I posted about 75 hard. And this one was saying like, what could you do instead if you do decide it's not the right fit for you? And I talked about 75 soft, which is not a name I came up with. Other people are talking about it. I think it's a great way to like get inspiration from 75 hard in order to get the weight loss benefits, not the mental toughness if you're not into it. Because again, two different outcomes, two totally different things. But the 75 hard people didn't get that. They didn't want to read my post and actually consider the fact that like there's nuance and 75 hard isn't the greatest thing on the entire planet for every single person. And so this person commented, it's still there if you want to go look at it. She was like, I'm all for people wanting to improve themselves, which when somebody says that, I'm like, are you? Because I feel like what you're about to say is going to contradict that. She said, call it anything else besides 75 soft. She's like, basically, this was the vibe I got. How dare you compare something so inferior to the almighty 75 hard. The way that she was talking about it, she was like, it's taking away from how amazing 75 hard is to create a different challenge and call it 75 soft. Like how tied up in yourself and how much of your value as a human being and your identity have you had to tie to 75 hard in order to be that offended that somebody's gonna be like doing a challenge that is completely different yet inspired by 75 hard with a completely different outcome like that's gonna make you upset mind-boggling absolutely mind-boggling and it just goes right back down to that same thing of feeling like how dare somebody else do something called 75 soft because 75 hard and those that complete it are so far above those that would do something like a 75 soft it is absolutely disgusting. And I also have talked about this in my video where I'm going through my old toxic Instagram posts before I like actually knew what I was talking about and I was just getting into the fitness industry. I talked about, I used, to, I'm getting so worked up about this. I came from a place of bodybuilding. I ate clean for like nine months, I think. Like six tiny meals a day, super clean, no cheating. If I ever did get a cheat, it was a clean cheat. A clean cheat? What? And I genuinely thought I was better than other people for my ability to stick to this really challenging, strenuous, restrictive diet. It's, th it's a thing. I know it's a thing because I thought that way. And trust me, I'm disgusted with myself for that. And I'm disgusted with every other person who thinks that way. I full blown just ranted on this and I did not follow the outline I made at all. That's how passionately I feel about this. So I'm gonna reconnect with my outline here. There's three main points that I wanted to touch on and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take back control of this video because I, I just went off script. That's how much this stuff bothers me. So all of this thinking, all of these thoughts, the first thing that I 
gather from this is the belief that you must be miserable to get results. And I kind of get where that's coming from because like, I think a lot of the times the only time people have gotten results is when they were miserable, but that's maybe just because they haven't found a way. I, like, let me just say this, it's not easy to find a way to get results that's enjoyable. It takes work. Like, I would even argue that it's harder to get results while doing something that you enjoy because it takes work to get there. Oftentimes, you're healing your relationship with your body, you're healing your relationship with food, you're challenging beliefs that may have been ingrained in you from a very, very young age. You're going against what all of fitness and diet culture is telling you it takes like this level of faith that a lot of people are not willing to commit to because the entire world is telling them otherwise like i get it i do but it's not true my entire philosophy as a coach is minimum effective dose like do the least to get the results you're looking for i have an entire training on it the link will be in the description and pinned in the comments like that is my whole thing i also feel like i need to mention this more like conspiracy ish type approach to this in that like the fitness and diet industry as a whole like i will refer to them as they because how else do we define it it's like who knows how much and like who is really behind what drives the fitness and nutrition and diet industries but it's very possible that if they convinced you that the only way to get results is if you hate it and it's really hard they know you're not going to be able to stick to it and you're not going to be able to get results which means you keep coming back forever and ever and ever and they can continually blame you for not being able to get results ever thought of that ever thought of that just saying this is what i see all the time with like diets especially like let's say you try the keto diet you try fasting you try eating clean whatever it is it's challenging it's not enjoyable most people can't sustain it long term a lot of people do actually get results with that and it's simply because they were in a calorie deficit i have a whole video and playlist here's the video on calorie deficit and a playlist all about calories calorie deficit is required to lose weight but a lot of times what happens is somebody tries a diet that is rather extreme and it causes a calorie deficit but in such an unsustainable way that they can't stick to it but they got results and so what happens is you see somebody who and i see this literally constantly somebody's like oh i did keto and i lost 20 pounds and then once they go off keto because it's not sustainable they gain some weight again because it's kind of inevitable then once they're at a weight that they're not happy with their immediate reaction is to go back to keto because they got results the first time and it's like the diet didn't work I know you think it worked because you got results the first time, but if you're gonna continually, and I talk about this in that masterclass, if you're going like this, you're not, that's not success. You're not keeping the weight off long term. I don't want you to be in a situation where you are constantly losing the same 20 pounds over and over and over again. That's, that's not where you wanna be. And another thing that I need to mention about this is this vibe that I've been getting. I've never heard anybody say this. Unlike the 75 hard people who are like, I could never be mediocre. It's sending a very clear message. This one is not so clear, but it's something I've, I've just felt. And that is that if you can't stick to a really restrictive diet, if you aren't willing to work out really hard five times a week, you don't deserve the results. Have you ever felt that way? Because I get that vibe a lot of the time. I think I might have mentioned this in my junk food reaction video. I can't remember, but if you like junk food, if you like enjoying your diet, if you like dessert, if you like chips, if you like whatever, you still deserve to lose weight. Like, I feel like I have to say that, but it's weird. Like who came up with this like moral superiority that like you have to deserve the results? I think that's also why people hate on like weight loss surgery and stuff like that. It's a very valid option for a lot of people, but why do people like downplay the results that people get from that? It's because they didn't work for it. Like get over yourself. And so that brings me into the next point, which I've kind of already touched on, which is like you're superior. If you can endure maximum restriction, maximum effort, the 75 hard people really pushed this one home for sure. But I wanna add a little bit more. There is a level of unchecked privilege that goes along with statements like this. A lot of the people in the 75 hard comment section were like, oh, 75 hard is scalable. So like you could go for a walk as one of your workouts. Like how, how easy and amazing to just go on a 45 minute walk. Cause you have to do two workouts per day, one outside, one inside. It's like one of them can just be a walk, babe. Okay, at the beginning of the pandemic, I lived in a neighborhood that I did not feel safe walking in. And that's a reality for a lot of people. Like I, there were literally like on the news, like somebody got shot like a couple blocks away from where I lived. Like I'm not gonna go walk outside. It's, what? I live in an amazing apartment complex now in Austin, Texas. We moved from Arizona to Texas recently. And our apartment complex is 
absolutely massive and has so many built-in walking trails. There is a little cute lake nearby that I walk to almost every day. Like that's privilege. I have the privilege of being able to scale to a cute little 45 minute walk outside. I know in that junk food video, I talked about privilege, about how some people live in food deserts and literally all they have access to is unhealthy food. Like there is a huge level of privilege that not enough people are talking about in the industry when we're talking about this kind of thing. And that gets me real fired up. That was one thing that made me really mad. It's like all of this, all of this energy lacks nuance. I'm also dealing with like some really tough health stuff right now. I made a video about it recently. It was absolutely terrifying to share, but I got so many comments from people saying, because of you, I'm also gonna go get help. So it was absolutely worth me literally shaking. I was like, I was pressing publish, but that's another layer of priv privilege involved. And unfortunately, I didn't really like think about these factors until I experienced them myself. And my life is really cushy compared to some other people's. So like, even though it, it sucked to like, have to buy groceries based on what was the cheapest thing and live in a neighborhood where I couldn't walk outside as one of my forms of exercise and to deal with crippling mental and physical health issues that made it impossible for me to eat well and exercise. I'm grateful for that because that gives me so much more insight into what like the large range of people's scenarios and situations that they have to deal with. And so many influencers that talk about this kind of stuff have not dealt with any of these issues themselves. And so they have no motivation to understand them or learn about them. So I'm grateful that those experiences pushed me to better understand those for you all. And the last thing that I wanna talk about, I didn't actually talk about this yet. So this one's brand new, hot off the press. If you aren't getting results, it's because you're not working hard enough. Ever had somebody tell you that? Ever had a coach tell you that? Ever had a doctor tell you that? Coaches, doctors, influencers, whoever it is that say this, that is a cop out. Straight up, you're either unwilling to help the person or you're in literally incompetent. I will say that there is a genre of people in the fitness and nutrition industry who would benefit from tough love like that. Like maybe you aren't working harder, you should work harder, fine. I always say that you should seek out content creators who make content that is relevant to you. So if you need tough love, go find somebody who's gonna give you tough love, but it's not me. Sometimes I do, but like empathetically. So I think that like, unless they are specifically only talking to those people and they acknowledge the fact that that's not actually gonna be valuable for some people, fine. But those people who push that tough love narrative and refuse to acknowledge any other scenario are copying, uh, just like, a, it's a full cop out. You're just bad at your job, babe. I wanna share a TikTok that I saw recently after I had already scripted this video, I saw this TikTok and I was like, oh my God, this is exactly what I'm talking about. I don't have it queued up, I forgot. So I'm just gonna, we're gonna cut, we're gonna play it. Her doctor refused to help her because they were like, just work harder move more, eat less. Like you just have to lose weight and it's your fault that you're not losing weight. She had a tumor. She had a tumor. Like tell me you're unwilling to actually help and care for your patient without telling me. I have had so many people do consultations with me, my clients, my students who were like, I literally feel heard and seen for the very first time ever because I can tell you actually care. And that's heartbreaking for me to hear that you've never felt seen or heard from anyone ever before in the industry. I wanna share this message that I got from a student in my course recently that perfectly exemplifies this and absolutely breaks my heart. I swear I like cried reading this. I just wanna give Lena a huge shout out for the modules on metabolism and metabolic adaptation slash reverse dieting. The way you present this critical knowledge in a straightforward and non-judgmental way is empowering AF. I've been told by medical professionals that my chronic fatigue, brain fog, lack of appetite, exhaustion after exercise, and lack of progress in weight loss despite doing everything by the book were just mental. The doctors and nutritionists I've encountered have always assumed that I'm overeating because of my weight. To them, if I'm not losing weight, it must be because I wasn't trying hard or I was lying or inaccurately reporting my diet, calories, and exercise. I felt defeated and like a hopeless case for a very long time until now. I literally cried while doing this course because for the first time, I feel like I have the knowledge and tools to get my mind and body back into a healthy relationship with food. Again, it is technically possible that you could be somebody. And I share this in my weight loss plateaus video. There's kind of three reasons why you may not be losing weight. Metabolic adaptation could be one of them, or you are actually in a situation where you're not in a calorie deficit, even though you think you should be. It is possible 
but just straight up yelling at people or like very unempathetically telling them like it's your fault just work harder you must be lying that's not helpful like present people with options in an empathetic way like when i tell somebody hey you may actually not be in a deficit even though you think you are i'm not like it's your fault you're not doing it right you're not working hard enough i'm like literally no sweat go check out this video for real because i'm kind of like paraphrasing what i talk about in that video in more depth but i'm like it's okay it's normal to make mistakes calorie tracking figuring all this stuff out is not exactly intuitive it's not an exact science there are a lot of very easy reasons why you may be making these mistakes and it's not your fault all we have to do is make some tweaks and get you back on track no big deal so again like i've been there i've lived all of this i've experienced a lot of this and i have changed as a coach as i have learned about the vast majority of unique circumstances that a lot of you guys have. I used to be a coach that trained every single client the exact same way. You're all tracking macros and you're all lifting weights. That's how I'm doing it because that's the best. It doesn't matter if it's the best on paper if you can't actually do it. You have to figure out what's best for you. And I talk about this in more depth of how things have changed and this how my coaching has changed YouTube video. If you wanna check it out, it's one of my older ones-ish. But that's why every single thing that I put out, my course, which if you wanna learn about it, link in bio, my masterclass, every single piece of content that I put out and why my videos I think are so long is because I care to speak through the nuance with you. It is impossible to share advice that is relevant to every single person watching that's why it's important for you as the consumer to only take what you feel like is relevant for you but also for creators who genuinely want to help to actually talk about this stuff so if you come across this type of rhetoric or somebody sharing narratives like this with you of like just work harder it's your fault you're not getting results you have to be miserable you should be miserable you don't deserve the results unless you work super hard for them and you hate your life the entire time just I literally can't stand it. It's disgusting. We need to stop. And we need to stop allowing people to push this narrative. So that's my rant. It's over. I feel like I blacked out and just like yelled at the camera the entire time. So I hope it came out okay. Um, comment below. Let me know what you think about all of this. Don't forget to also like and subscribe here. And you can follow me on TikTok and Instagram as well. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.